Okay, as I was talking about yesterday, I'm working a little bit on trying to create some sort of mutant hybrid, taking the uh, framework of your classic uh, D20 OSR style games, and then throwing a lot of the rules out and replacing them uh, with a new rule set that is reliant on the use of uh, playing cards, specifically uh, your basic standard tarot deck and your classic poker cards, uh, you know, as either presented by Hoyle or bicycle. So once again, you'll need like your just your basic rider weight deck, or pretty much any tarot deck if you want to like use one that's more themed to the kind of setting or game style that you're uh, looking to run. And then all the players are gonna need their own pack of cards, and they'll need two die six. the The DM will also need two die six, but will not need their own deck of cards on hand for their own themselves. Although a good DM will have all these things on hand just in case one of their players doesn't and or forgets to bring their own. So, um, the basics of character creation is you can either do it where it's a single uh, reading between the uh, DM, card reader, and their player, or you can have all the players together and uh, do character creation at the same time, which to me I think is the, the more interesting way to, to do it with this game, especially since you can crank a character out pretty quickly. Uh, for character creation, it's... Basically, characters are broken into two major sections on their character sheet. The one section is dealt with uh, going out of tarot cards, and the other section is based on playing cards. Uh, from the tarot cards, basically, the character gets uh, three major arcana cards that are randomly dealt to them to define their character's uh, overall class package. Uh, the first card will be their character's background. Uh, will uh, basically will define uh, what kind of skills that that character already knows and has, you know, that they learned prior to the beginning of their adventuring career. Uh, the second card will stand in for their class, which is where the character basically is right now. It's their current occupation, and really much more uh, uh, it will be used to define uh, what kind of equipment they use and what kind of equipment they currently have. And then the third card will be reflect the character's destiny or future and uh, will uh, basically kind of define what sort of talents and potentials that, that character has that will increase and become more developed as the character levels up through the course of a game. And I have an uh, idea in mind. I haven't gotten to the point of actually like working out the experience uh, leveling rules yet, but the concept is, is once you get up to fifth level, you can either choose to remain there at the peak of whatever your occupational game is, or you can choose to basically uh, retrain yourself. Uh, you can slide your, your, your present and future card down one slot so that uh, your, your current class is now the character's background and the current destiny is now the character's class and then you can draw a new destiny card to work towards as you then go through another five levels of progress um and you know the way if you have a bunch of players sitting out you can deal the cards one at a time to them so that uh, it kind of like melds the overall luck and reading together to also prevents any low overlap at all, at least at the very beginning of the game during character creation. Like, each character that way has a unique set of uh, things they bring to the table. And since there are 22 different major arcana, and that they each, you know, operate slightly differently depending on whether or not you're using the tower here uh, to be, you know, your character's background or your character's class or your character's destiny, uh, that gives you, like, what, 22 times 3 different variations... Uh, to build characters out of so and also I mean you could also just get three cards and choose where you want to go or if your dungeon master is open to it just let people choose what they want out of the book kind of a thing uh, you know, as with all things this is optional but you know if you're going to go with the tarot card theme then you should do tarot-ish things in there it should be clear that I'm not trying at all to replicate a uh an actual like mystical tarot experience. This is not supposed to be giving any sort of like, you know, prescient vision of the future for any of the players or the DM's fate or anything like that. Uh, what I'm doing is giving you a reason to finally use that deck of tarot cards that you bought that one time and has been sitting on a shelf ever since then. Uh, now, for your character's ability scores slash attributes, whatever you want to call them, I'm probably going to call it a suit of attributes because what you do is you have... Instead of the six classic attributes, I'm dropping constitution, so you just have strength, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. Uh, your character, your the player, I guess in this instance, would then take out their Hoyle cards, 
you know, just randomly deal themselves out five cards, two, three, four, five, and in that order, you get what your character's attribute numbers are. So their strength would be a five of clubs. Their dexterity would be only a two of spades. Jack would be, or the uh, intelligence is a jack of spades. Wisdom, pretty damn wise character here. We got a king of hearts. And for charisma, a five of diamonds. So uh, the reason you do keep track of the suit is there are instances through how the game actually runs in play where you have stuff like resonance, where if uh, depending on the type of skill or attack you're using and the, uh, the attribute that, that determines you know, the, the basis for your success, uh, uh, if you have cards in the player's active hand at, for whatever the encounter is, uh, they can use a card that matches that uh, suit. Say, for instance, you know, we got the intelligence here of the Jack of Spades, right? The character's trying to do some sort of intelligence-based skill. And they, they have that as their basis, but the difficulty's really high, and they want to make sure they get there. You, so, you know, you're, you're, you start off with the Jack, so that's a 10. You roll two dice six, that's how you get the number that your character's generating to beat the difficulty. In this instance, rolls a five, so you can basically be any, beat anything from a 14 or under, but say, what if the difficulty is 16? Well, normally that, you know, that would be a failure, but since they have the attribute suit is a club or a spade, uh, if you happen to have another card that is a spade in your hand at the time, like this two of spades, since there's resonance and synergy in terms of the suit, you can add this two to that intelligence skill check to then get it up over the difficulty number and still manage to succeed. But you can only do that with cards that match suits to the thing being used as, like, you know, the primary attribute that's at the basis of whatever kind of action the character is accomplishing. There's also another way in combat where uh, you can use the resonance with the NPC if, if you have it, if the NPC's uh, type of NPC suit matches uh, the uh, suit of whatever attack the character is making. Uh, that, that would allow them to uh, use a card that's appropriate to boost the amount of damage they do and so on. So, but, you know, it should be fairly easy. Just deal out your five cards, you write down what they are, your character creation is effectively done. Uh, in, in play characters, like I said, at first level you'll start off in whatever combat encounter or uh, social encounters, you know, a lot of other kind of stuff, you know, your character will draw a hand to five. As they increase in level, they can keep more cards in their hand. Uh, generally, you'll get to only replace one at a time at the end of a turn. So even if you spend, you can spend a bunch of your cards one round, but then you're going to have a lower pool of cards unless you manage to just not use any of your cards a couple of rounds and build yourself back up to a full hand. Uh, there's no hit points. Uh, I guess I could just describe through the whole combat sequence now, couldn't I? Where did I put that? Here we go. So, you know, first part of the combat sequence draw initiative player chooses a card out of their hand that they want to use as their initiative uh you know your immediate instinctive reaction is well i'm going to put down my highest card but that also means you just spent your highest value card that you could have used in some other combination um so anyway out of out of everyone's opening hand the players all draw one card uh to be their initiative uh, the dm will assign uh, one card out of the minor arcana part of the tarot deck as initiative for the various NPCs that are in play. Uh, the DM's hand is limited to the number of PCs that are there and the number of NPCs that they're controlling combined together. Uh, each round, when you start off, you can, you know, characters can have a move or use object or talk action for free. They are also able to make a single attack for free. Uh, melee is based on the strength plus a roll of two die six. Ranged is dex plus two die six. Spells are generally going to be wisdom plus two die six. Uh, enemy targets do have an armor class, just classic ascending, got to roll over a ten kind of stuff. And as this is describing, uh, if it's possible that the, the the character making the attack has a form of resonance with the target, then that uh, character can use. Uh, cards out of their hand to increase the amount of damage they do or increase the likelihood of being able to strike them in the first place. Um, upon being attacked, a target, if they want, can use any card in their hand uh, to increase uh, their AC temporarily to kind of reflect dodging or some other maneuver. 
uh, if they don't choose to play a card or they don't have any cards left, uh, they are reliant purely just on whatever their flat AC is. Uh, damage is generally going to be one or two dice six, uh, depending on the kind of weapon. As said, with the, if, the, if the attacker has resonance with the target, they can potentially boost that with a card out of their hand. Uh, target can then soak the damage. Instead of having pit points, what you do is basically you're trying to, the, the amount of points of damage you do are trying to knock the cards out of the opponent's hands. Um, so basically, uh, say, you know, uh, the attack does five points of damage. And you got a two and a jack available. Now, you got to soak up that, that, that damage. Uh, the two is not going to be enough. The jack, even though it has more points than just five, since it counts for 10 points, you still have to basically spend it to suck up that five points of damage, only leaving you with two, but then you also will still get to redraw cards at the end of your turn. As long as a character uh, does not take any damage uh, in, in excess of what they're capable of soaking, they're fine. Even if it does reduce all the cards out of their hand, as long as there wasn't any damage beyond that, that still would apply to the character, the character's fine. If the character does take any damage uh, beyond what they are able to soak with cards in their hand, uh, that character then gains the injured status. If they find themselves taking uh, damage that they're not able to soak while injured, that character is dead. Uh, you can, after all that, uh, make a bonus attack. If you have a card in your hand that is the same suit as uh, the you know attribute you're using to base your attack, your first initial free attack on, let's say for instance the uh, the dexterity being the two of spades, that's pretty low, but you know you, you use it, you roll your dice, do all your thing, you've had one attack. Well, because uh, the dexterity is based on a spade, if you want to make a bonus ranged attack, you can if you have another spade card in your hand. In this instance, uh, instead of using the attribute, this card now becomes the base uh, for the for second bonus attack. So you take the value of 10, you roll your two die six and add that together and see if you beat the target's AC. Uh, unlike a regular attack though, a bonus attack cannot be further boosted by resonance. It's just, you just get the one thing. And if you have several cards that all match the right suits, character can make a multiple attack. However, it's gonna burn out their hand and make them less versatile on the next round or more vulnerable if they get attacked after that because they have less cards available, available in order to be able to soak damage. So the idea here is that it kind of creates a an interesting balancing act as players become familiar with it and have to start kind of thinking tactically about what's in their hand at any given moment uh, to, you know, like, is it good to th throw yourself into a, an, all, an all overwhelming onslaught and just take this guy out? Or do you want to hold off in case you might have to defend yourself and you don't want to leave yourself flat-footed and, you know, at risk of becoming injured or dying? And then, you know, once all that's resolved, uh, you just go back up the top and just go through your typical, you know, round after round of everyone taking their turn in order of initiative until combat is resolved. So uh, that's the bulk of what I have down for it right now. Um, I guess next up I'll probably be, like, uh, expanding a bit more on exactly what skills are and skill uh, uh, action encounters. And... Uh, after that, it's gonna have to be like NPCs. It's gonna have to figure out how magic's gonna work with all this. It's a big work in process, but that's what I got so far. So, hope you enjoy. Stay waspinated and get the fuck out of my house.